special guest with us tonight, and that is Diana Shine. And of course, we've got Peter Stout with us. So we are so, so hey, glad everybody. that you were here with us. And um, we're excited to bring Diana all the way from Portland into our house tonight. So welcome, yeah. Diana. We're so glad you're here. Thank you. <laughs> it's good to be here. <laughs> all right. Yeah, this we can so see fun. you and we can hear you. So. Oh, good. This is so fun. So fun. Awesome. <laughs> so, That's great. For those of you who don't know, um, Diana is a fellow instructor here at Acrylic University, and she is an amazing artist. She lives in Portland, Oregon, and um, she is an incredible acrylic painter. She uses the acrylic medium to the fullest of its ability, and it's going to be really fun tonight to paint with her. And I don't know about you, Diana, but this is my, my take on this. I am nervous. Me too. <laughs> I think you're the best fast painter around. So I, I no, feel this, a little nervous. <laughs> I, I'll tell you what, my thing is, my thing is, I just feel like, you know, this was a mistake to have you come on here because <laughs> it's like, uh, I don't know what I was thinking. And I, I just hope that I don't get, you know, like this is my analogy. I was thinking about this beforehand. I was thinking, you know, when you go up and you're like the little football team and you're playing the really big football team, all you're hoping for, you're not hoping for a win. Like this isn't a competition, but you're not hoping for a win, but you're just hoping that you don't get humiliated really bad. <laughs> you know? yeah. Like that's my goal is that I just like, uh, my my painting will be like okay when it's compared to yours, you know. Yes, so anyway, <laughs> now this is really fun. And yeah. Diana, can you tell us a little bit? Of, we're going to be painting from a reference photo of yours. Do you want to tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, I uh, took this photo on Prince Edward Island, which is on the east coast of Canada. Uh, before all the stuff started happening, I would visit there every summer or fall. Um, and it's like a province way. It's a, you know, it's the time zone an hour east of East Coast time. That's how far east it is. And I just love it. It's the most beautiful little island. And um, people are great. And this birch forest is just filled with, uh, like fog in the back and the birch trees were starting to turn color. It was late September when I visited um, and the light is just golden. So I'm, I really have wanted to paint these birches for a long time. Uh, and so I'm excited to get to do it with you because this is a super fun thing. Cool, cool. That is so awesome. awesome. And I'm going to see if Peter can pull up the photo for everybody to yeah, see. Absolutely. I've actually got it here. Um, but it's just going to be kind of small on my my corner over there. But I am ready. Are you ready to go? I'm I'm ready to go. I have my palette set up. But my canvas is ready. So here we go, huh? <laughs> this is so fun. Okay. Well, this is fun. I'm excited. I haven't. We haven't done this with another person painting at the same time. So this is like the first time that this is happening. Now, oh my goodness, I can't believe that. But your phone just turned sideways on us, and then did it shut off? Uh, yeah, I think her. I think her connection dropped a little bit. Oh no. Okay. Well, guys, I'm gonna I'm gonna get going here. Um, <laughs> we're we're having a little bit of a problem with um, with Diana's internet connection. She yeah. is dropped in a, and out a couple times on us, but hopefully she'll be able to come back. And uh, mm. we're, we're really looking forward to seeing what she does. If worst case scenario, very worst case scenario is we won't be able to watch her paint tonight, but she'll just move upstairs to yeah. where the reception is better. And then um, we'll go with that. But mm. now I was kind of glad to see she had brought her black canvas because I had actually um, decided that I was going to do a um, – Oh, man, for a second, I thought I saw her come on, but you just switched the screen around a little bit. <laughs> I did. Yeah, I just switched it. <laughs> That's Swap awesome. Room. Who's with us here? Yeah, yeah. I'll, I want to pull up the reference photo real quick, and then I will yeah, get yeah, yeah. The, um comments here in a sec. Okay, bird. Okay, cool. There we go. Um, 
but yeah, so we got Lisa Elliott. Um, she says, I teach online and drop connections happen to me too. So oh, man. Uh, she can certainly relate to that. Um, yeah. Terry Cummings, this is Bevo's daughter, she says. Oh, yeah. Hey, I saw your comment last week, and I, I think you're in Portland, aren't you, Terry? Anyways, keep going. So glad. Um, yeah, and then we have um, Helen Van Porten. Matthew Kelly says hello from Snow Homish. All um, right. Hey. Mary McLean. Um, Jude, I, I'm not going to try and say your last name because I will butcher it. It says hi from <laughs> East Texas. Welcome. Um, and we do have Diana Shine back with us. She, she'll just be chatting oh, with us tonight. I'll just, I might just be chatting with you. I'm going to try moving my art stuff just closer. So I might get a later start than you got, than you, Jed. Oh, I'm no, just going to okay. try pulling my. <laughs> Sounds good. And I'm just going to pull it over closer to the hallway, see if I can get it to stream anything. <laughs> okay, cool. All, All right. right. Well, but it's, good. Uh, well, this is going to take the pressure off anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. Well, it'll take the pressure off you, but this is what it'll do to me is I'll be laboring away here and I'll be, you know, struggling along. And then what will happen is you'll pull out your paints the last like little bit of the show. And then all of a sudden you'll whip out this painting and <laughs> yeah. yours is going to be so awesome. And <laughs> Thank you. A- I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Diana, uh, I'm going to turn you off the stream for okay. just a second while you get that all set up, um, but we will see you in a second. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, yeah, we got Jude from East Texas, uh, Chris Van Wick from Arizona. Welcome, Chris. Good to have you. Um, Leora says it's so nice to have you both. So, nice to have you here, Leora. Thank you for coming. Um, Diane Soden Grove says no comparing allowed, Jed. So, yeah, I know, I know. It's all in fun. It, it's like it's like totally against what everything I talk about, but it's it's the most fun to talk that way. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, I know you. Um, then we got Gigi G, or G. I'm not sorry if I pronounce that prop or improperly, but she says hello from Colorado. Um, Pam Eckert says hello from Gresham, Oregon. Um, yeah, guys, it's gonna be a fun evening tonight um so fun jed starting off with the gray canvas and the yeah i have a great brush canvas strokes right. interesting yep 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 you know that's like um well you guys so i know that um you know this is not about competition but you have to understand that basically i'm not really an artist like <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm i'm way more of a uh I played sports so much growing up that it's really hard for me not to be competitive about things. (laughs) And so even, even if it's not, it's not a competition at all in any way, it's the funny thing about me is that like, I actually, I like that kind of thing. It's just fun because it's kind of like, it makes it fun for me to uh, just like talk about it. But, but at the same time, I hope you know that it's all in fun. It's just a big joke for me. And, uh, but I, I, I like to think, I mean, you know, I mean, I would, that is what I feel like if I, if I really sit down and I think about it, I'm like, I'm going up against like, man, who would be a, I don't know, a, a good sports analogy. It's, <laughs> it's just like going up against Muhammad Ali or something like that. Mm-hmm. And you're like, should I really do this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, um, we got... Z from Portage Lakes, Ohio, enjoying the subject matter. Um, So awesome. Lori says, hi from Pleasanton, California. I'm in the mini challenge and I love it. We're glad you're enjoying that mini challenge, Lori. Yeah. Um, Vera says, oh, technology. Ugh. Ugh, indeed. Hopefully we can get (laughs) Diana back. It looks like she might be working on it. Maybe we'll see. Um, Uh, Yeah. They might figure it out. That'd be awesome. Diana, this one's for you. She says, want to say thanks for Diana's Design 101 course. It's so helpful. Um, that is awesome. Yeah, glad you guys are enjoying that. Um, I I know when I was editing that course, I was like, they're going to love this course. It's so solid. <laughs> yeah, that's super awesome. Tracy Gordon, good reminder. She says, Peter, remind everyone to like the stream. So everybody, be sure to like the stream. 
And if you haven't yet subscribed so that you're notified every time we go live or release new painting content, um, it also keeps the trolls away. Sometimes we have nasty people jump in the chat, but if you give it a thumbs up, um, keeps the it, trolls away a little bit. Really? How's that work? That's interesting. Trolls more only more. want bad. They only want to come over if it's bad. No, it, I, it more negates the effect that the trolls have from jumping. Oh, into okay, slides. gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Is a better way to put it. Um, but yeah, guys, great to have you all. Super fun, super fun. Yeah, hasn't it been fun the last few weeks when we've had uh, different people on here too? I know last week we had Ted Eckert on here, and that was just a blast. The week before, was it just, man, has, has it only been Ted and Doug? And now, is this the third time we've had it, or am I yeah, missing? I think, no, I think it's only been Ted and Doug so far. That's crazy. It seems like it's been lo a little longer than that, but, man, <laughs> it's been so fun, I think, that it it's uh, yeah, um, awesome. Shelly says, yikes, I started with a black canvas and it's slightly wet. Um, <laughs> Sorry. Well, that's yes, why I was, I was saying I'm, I'm hoping Diana can get back because she had a black canvas. And I know people are mad at me if I start with something other than black because I never tell yeah. anybody. <laughs> I know. But really what it was was I looked around my, my, uh, my studio and I had a ton of gray ones and I couldn't find a black one. So that's really the only reason I did it. Um. Diane Dillon says, did you mention where you were going next on your painting tour? I think it's Nova Scotia, right? It is. Yes, it's going to be super fun. It's a really cool sunset scene of uh, some like, I don't know, fishing shacks and stuff with uh, over the water with a little bit of land. So it's really a beautiful scene. It's going to be fun. Awesome. Oh, and like we, we have Diana back. She it looks like she's painting. So I'm going to go. Oh, ahead and... Cool. Adam. Do I need guys. to level this out? There we go. Okay, yeah, oh, we can, hey, we can hear that's we can looking see good. You. Yeah, it is. Okay, you can see me. Ah. Yes, yeah, we can. There look we at go. That. Welcome, oh Diana. man, oh man, I'm getting, I'm getting so uh, intimidated now again. No. <laughs> <laughs> Not allowed. Uh, Not allowed. <laughs> I know. I know. Diana's oh, off to the races, awesome. man. She, I. I looked at her little thumbnail and she was just going at it. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm going I'm going for it. So this That's little awesome. island, um, Prince Edward Island, is right next to Nova Scotia. So it's sort of part of the travel. Oh, nice. <laughs> the, the the little around the around the world theme world a little tour, bit. Yeah. There we go. All right. Let's get some stuff. It, I, I have to tell myself it's not a race because I'm I dead got a head start. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, I, I when we were um, when um, when Peter switched away earlier, it gave me a really great idea. But I don't even want to say what my idea is because it's not. It, I can't do it tonight. I don't. It's it's not going to work tonight. But I have a really good idea for a future one of these. Yeah, and yeah, I don't spoil it. Even don't bring spoil it up, but I have a real, I think it'd be really fun to do to somebody, to some unsuspecting guest who <laughs> oh, <laughs> won't no. become paint. <laughs> you hear that, guys? If you're thinking about being a guest on Friday Night Live, don't <laughs> run. Don't run. <laughs> Jed will put you on the spot. And yeah. Oh, man. No, it's, it's actually just more like a little, uh, well, I don't know. I can't say too much about it or else I'll end up telling you my idea. <laughs> yes. This is what always happens. So I always do this. I say like, I'm not going to tell you. And then by the end of the night, I've told everybody everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, Good thing you're not a spy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a no good kidding. career choice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Uh, Joan Hitchcock <laughs> has a question for Jed. She asked, what size brush is Jed using? Uh, this is a number eight right here this is a uh flat eight and then before i was using a uh, number six so this one was a number six and yeah i mean it, ask questions you guys this is a really great opportunity to ask uh diana questions um yeah. but you can ask 
any anybody you can ask peter any questions like how he's doing how his <laughs> well you know what peter's been doing though. recently diana we're so impressed with peter you know what he's doing he's doing what? like he's doing meal prep he's he's <laughs> basically like at the beginning of the week making how many meals do you make peter um like six six meals at the beginning of the week and then he he has them throughout the whole week to eat isn't that awesome that's yeah. wonderful you're gonna be a chef in no time yeah exactly i have extra incentive because <laughs> john l wants me to be able to cook <laughs> so <laughs> extra incentive that's extra good incentive. so if anyone's interested i'm just blocking in a big sort of scraggly background Mm -hmm. There goes Diana got, with her signature uh, adding all the texture to that painting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> with my scribbling. Uh, what colors are you using, Jed? I what have, well, I have cadmium yellow light. And, well, this is kind of like a mixture of, I should say it's cadmium yellow medium mixed with cadmium yellow lemon. I didn't have cadmium yellow light in this certain kind of paint, so I mixed those two together. Then this is ultramarine blue. This is actually the only color that's like pure straight out of the tube. This is cadmium red, but you know how different brands call things different colors and whatever. Yeah. I'm using Quin uh, Windsor Newton right now, like these, these professional. I don't know if you've ever tried these. I know you're a golden girl. Um, the golden girl, but, yeah. <laughs> in so many ways. <laughs> but, I was watching somebody paint with them the other day and he said that they don't have any color shift. And I was like kind of intrigued by that. So I'm like, I'm going to try those. And it's actually pretty true. Like they do shift a little bit, but it's very minimal. And um, so anyways, but their quinacridone red is not the pigment that i that i usually use so i mixed quinacridone red and quinacridone magenta there um so anyways those are the colors i've got what do you have i have naphthol red light okay yeah yellow, and then i've got anthroquinone blue and um cerulean blue chromium hue that's it okay and I just do a real simple just keep keep her simple in uh We'll see what comes of this. I don't yeah. Know. But right For now sure. I'm just going from the dark for sort of purpley foreground up through the warm mid ground up into that gray background. Yeah. And then uh, getting some texture in there before we put on leaves and sticks and branches and trees and so yeah. we'll, um, see. we'll see how this works. <laughs> I know, I know. This is such a cool, I, you know, I, I love these scenes of these aspen trees, but I, I've never, I haven't painted them too often. Um, so this is really fun for me. Oh, it's super fun for me too. I'm, I uh, have been wanting to paint this for a really long time, like I said, and we'll see. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> see what exactly. happens, right? Um, exactly. Diana. Their trucks are so interesting in the light. Um, I don't know if the... People can see really close up, but they they shift from like this gold light to almost a red turning plane, and then sort of a purpley blue to a greeny blue. It's just really an, a beautiful. The trunks are just gorgeous. So we'll yeah. see if we'll see who can who can render them. I don't know. We'll see. Oh yeah. <laughs> not not right no pressure. No pressure. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a couple questions for you, Diana. Um, yeah. Somebody was saying Diana looks like she has metallic paint. Is that true or? Nope. No. No. Okay, so there's... This is all just regular paint. Um, it's looking really shiny. Um, I don't know if I have glare on the canvas or not because mm. I can't see it. But um, it's just looking really shiny because of the dark against light stuff that's going on. Um, so, um, perfect. And then Diane asks, have either of you painted with water mixable oils? I have used them. Uh, someone gave me a set. I used them for one minute and I gave them away. 
<laughs> I thought they were ah. too sticky. I just didn't like how sticky they were. And I love when you use acrylics like they're meant to be used out of the tube and thick. They're creamy. They should feel creamy on your brush and and buttery and soft and not sticky at all. And um, and that was that was like 20 years ago that I used that set of oils. So they might be nicer now. I don't know. Uh, I just didn't like the way they felt back then. Yeah, gotcha. I've, I've heard that's that's the most common complaint that I've heard about them is the consistency. I The, the best brand that I have read about is Cobra, and that's um, um, who makes it? Um, Amsterdam or I uh, can't remember the, the parent company that makes that that brand, but it's Roy, Royal Talons is the maybe the main company there, but that – I actually have only used it a little bit. Um, I have been interested in it because um, if I was to do oil painting, I would do water mixable oils. And uh, so there's a part of me that like I have a set that I bought a couple years ago and, and I basically never really used them either, but I, I did a tiny little bit with it and not enough to really gauge anything, but I mean, the idea of mixing it with water is, is the most uh, kind of interesting part for me. Yeah, yeah, is for me too. I, I switched, I was an oil painter in the 90s. And in around 2000, I switched to acrylics due to health reasons. And I just threw out uh, everything oil painting, gave it away, threw it away, got rid of it because I was so sick. Wow. Someone gave me a fabulous amount of acrylic paints and I just figured that's just what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> yeah. So I've, I've, I've played with other um, mediums, but I keep coming back to acrylics um, and acrylics thicker and thicker and thicker. I just, I love them. I love the texture. I love the feel of them under my brush. I love the way they look when they're used, when they're put down right. Um, yeah. There was a question, somebody was taking, doing a critique with me and she was saying that the texture of her canvas was coming through. And I don't know if other people have had that problem, but I really don't like the texture of, I can see it here, the texture of my canvas a little bit coming through. Um, I fixed that. If I'd had time, I would have put three or four layers of gesso and then a coat of clear gel. And that just fills in all the texture or I use wood. Um, but if you use thick paint, done. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> mm. there you yeah. Go. So Diana, um, tell, tell us a little bit about your, yourself. Like, um, I mean, I know probably more than most people, you know, Peter, Peter knows you, but there's probably people out there that, that don't know a ton about you and love to just hear you, you know, just tell us whatever you want. Tell us your favorite color. Tell us what kind of uh, car you like. Uh, tell us <laughs> where you, you know, why do you, why do you live in Portland? You know, why did you, you used to live here? I know, uh, you know, you moved there, you know, so what, tell us anything you want. Okay. Well, I will tell you a little bit about my painting journey, if that's okay. Perfect. Yeah, um, go for it. And um, I am not young anymore. <laughs> Surprise! Um, mm -hmm. But in the early 80s, I went and saw at the Fry Museum in Seattle um, a show of Russian Impressionist paintings by Sergei Vongard and Nikolai Feshin. And I was so moved by those paintings. They emotionally spoke to me that I just, I think I was in my early 20s and I just said, that's what I want to do with my life and that's the way I want to paint. 
I want to be uh, a painter, and this is the way I want to paint. And then I just sought out, instead of going to art school, I sought out people who had learned how to paint with Russian Impressionists. And um, mm. I studied with those guys for like 15 years before I, I launched out on my own in watercolor oil and oil. There was nobody teaching Impressionism and acrylics at the time. So I had to just kind of find my own way once I switched to acrylics. Yeah. But I found some beautiful teachers who could teach me the sort of this skill or art of Russian Impressionism. Uh, two things. I'm not Russian. <laughs> That's a big thing. Uh, and the other thing is the Impressionist movement has sort of moved on from the turn of the last century so there's that you know modern sort of take on russian impressionism okay I have to think about but a lot of what it is is trying to find a way to create the mood of the scene trying to find the colors and the shapes and the designs uh, that create emotional attachment emotion and mood um mm. so there's that <laughs> and i've just yeah. i've been painting away for years and years uh trying to do just this painting all over the world uh plein air and studio painting teaching everywhere i go even like i even taught up in um the arctic circle in nunavut territories in canada <laughs> wow <laughs> all over the place that's awesome <laughs> it's fun journey um but we moved to i w lived on kameno island we just passed jed we never met each other as co islanders yeah. so uh, we crazy. just passed each other i was moving out as he was moving in and i moved to portland because it turns out i have two little wonderful grandsons that need me <laughs> and we didn't know about COVID then, but they really, um, their daycare went out of business. Wow. And was only taking um, essential workers. And so they needed me. And I just happened to be here. I moved for them. So, yeah. And one of them is two and one of them is five. So we'll be here a while. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's so the awesome. Is, the, the little guy, from the time he was just one years old, could point to a painting and say, he calls me Aya. He would say, Aya did it. And mm. um, he could he could name, my husband paints too, he does abstract. Um, and he could paint to my husband's work and say, Papa did it. And uh, so he's he's uh, really into paintings and he'll grab my paintings. He's just to grab my paintings and hug them and run away with them and say, I love it. I love it. I love oh, it. Oh, my goodness. I know. That's what a so cutie, awesome. huh? <laughs> so anyway, that's sort of the, the joy there. That's the that's awesome. Yeah. And and um, so when you um, I mean, basically what it sounded like you were saying is like, of course, you didn't know COVID was going to happen, but you moved down there for to be close to your ch your daughter and grandchildren there. Yeah. Um, yes. And then, but then it's like extra awesome that you're there during this time that's been so tricky and hard and, you know, challenging and, and uh, for, for parents, for them, you know, you being right. there is incredibly amazing. Just That's to awesome. maneuver through the space as parents of a kindergarten kid, it's really hard for them. And, you know, we're able to do online kindergarten, you know, sit with him through online kindergarten if he, if that's what they need or, you know, whatever. And it's been yeah. just a blessing to be here. And we found a cool old house that fits our needs. We've got studios for both of us. Michael is also a jazz musician. And so he has a his music studio and his art studio and... I have my my base my 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 dark basement that doesn't evidently doesn't get internet. Uh, <laughs> so I know. It did during our practice session yesterday, and then today right. decided not to. But, yeah, you know, it's just it's a lovely, it's really lovely, and we just it have sure is. Uh, we have a lovely, um, you know, just 
uh, situation, considering what so many others are going through, I feel so mm -hmm. blessed and um, just we've been granted so many, you know, sweet blessings along the way. Um, yeah. And wow. Well, we, uh, you guys may not know this either, but Peter and I went down a couple Octobers ago and we spent some time with Diana and Michael at their house. They have a guest uh, suite, I guess, um, kind of off house. And um, that was really fun. It was super um, nice to spend time with you, talk, you know, we... Did, did all that kind of stuff, but then also uh -huh. we, we just uh, were able to enjoy Portland. Portland's a really, you know, beautiful city, and um, I went to school in Salem, which isn't that far away, but I had never really spent that much time in Portland, so mm -hmm. it was fun to be there and kind of explore the city a little bit, too, so you chose a nice That's city to land in. Yeah. Correct. We did. It's it's awesome. And there's so many good people here. I know I I heard a couple of names that I recognized from around here. And um <laughs> so Oh from people from people that yeah. were on the stream tonight? Yeah, yeah, from oh, tonight. Cool. It's it's sort of great to, to hear those names. Yeah. Yeah, that's fun. I, do you know Terry? I'm just wondering if you do. Well, uh, was it Terry? Uh, I'm trying to think. Cummins. She. No. I, she's actually her. Her. I know her. Her parents. They were um, from here on the island. Her dad just passed away. Her mom, Bev, is still. Um, Oh, like she was on the stream last week with us. It was super fun to see her. But anyways, I think Terry, if I remember correctly, she lives in Portland. So anyways, I was just, I don't know if you probably, I mean, it's a long shot that you would have know her, but I just was asking since you said you recognized a couple of people and she had said hi when she came on the stream tonight. Yeah, no, sorry. I don't know, Terry. It's It's been sort of sad this last year not being able to get to meet people. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's for sure. Kind of, you know, I feel I, like you know... Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, no, I just love meeting folks and, you know, it's been, it's not been easy. So I think for people who are new to an area, uh, not being able to meet new people is especially challenging. I mean, yeah. if you already are established and have lots of connections, you might not feel the need to meet new people, but if you're fairly new to an area, that's a little bit like us. Renee and I have found that, you know, um, we're fairly new still here. We know our family and we have some relationships, but mm -hmm. this would be a good time to be meeting more people you know, at the same time. Yeah. So. It would be, wouldn't yeah. it? <laughs> yeah. Although um, I have to say, being online and doing online classes, um, makes it possible to meet all kinds of people from all over the place. And that's been really um, fun. That's true. Yeah, it it's actually been life-giving to me. Yeah, me too. It's just, just really joyous to get to meet people from all over the place. All right. Yeah. <laughs> um, I've got some weird little things happening here. I better pay attention. <laughs> I create some strange, strange little thing so <laughs> that's weird. and right what? says um i'm a former portlander i grew up in albany oh yeah what? albany oregon yeah and then um rachel d ray gun says it's so cool to see how differently you each paint this is a good idea oh good so good you we can thank you jed know, for that idea it's funny we couldn't Pro I'd probably be more different, you know, and still sort of be working in a impressionist realist vein. We, we're <laughs> so different. Uh, <laughs> I watch Jed's um, demos and I'm just blown away by, you know, it, what he can do. And yeah, you know, so, uh, for we sure. Just be more different. Um, 
Yeah, I, 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 I think it's interesting to watch side by side like this because I can glance up every once in a while and see. And <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're, and I mean, the thing that I find too is you're painting on black. I'm painting on gray. Some of what I'm doing would change a little bit if I was painting on black, you know. Um, so there is a little bit of a difference in some of that, but you know, we're 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 gonna paint different no matter what, and it's no it's matter quite, what. Yeah, right. So, so it, is, it is fun to it's fun to see. Mm -hmm. One of the things I really try to emphasize with my students is how important it is to learn the basics and then find out who you want to be and paint towards that. You know, find out the, what do you want to paint like when you grow up? Paint towards that, you know. Yeah. Really, because if we all painted the same, you know, that's not how that's not how poetry works. If everybody writes poems that are, have all the same stuff in them. <laughs> yeah. We try to find our own voices and that sometimes means failing a lot. Falling yeah. down, getting up again saying well that didn't work and then going again uh, <laughs> yeah that's for sure well and you guys if you oh go ahead i i don't want to cut you off sound like you're going to say something probably just you know the further deep the deeper i get into the painting the more i just talk blathery <laughs> <laughs> me too <laughs> well what i was going to say is um you know, for those of you who are part of Acrylic University, you mm -hmm. you may know this already, but I'm just going to say it because uh, Diana offers some individual coaching things. So she does some um, critiques. So if you want a personalized critique, like you actually want somebody to go in and say, this is what I see in your painting. You know, uh, this is where I think you could work, you know, work on these specific things. This is the kind of stuff that Diana does in her critiques. And, um, and, and she also does a, a more extensive thing called personal coaching. I think that's what it's called. Anyways, I don't know. You, you could find it, but Peter, I think has a link or two to those things that he could put up at some point. But anyways, it, it's a really great opportunity. If you're in that place where you're, you're, you're kind of wondering, maybe, maybe it's with that exact question that, that Diana was just talking about, like, mm -hmm. what is, what, what am I trying to do in, in my art, you know? Um, or I kind of have an idea, but I don't know how to get there. Um, mm -hmm. a, a, a session with Diana would be a really, really valuable thing for you. And I know you could talk to different people who've done it. Um, and they could, they could, you know, share some insights into that. So if you, if you want to talk to uh, anybody, you can reach out to us or you can kind of speak out in the community and see, um, just say, hey, you know, get, I, I'm just looking for some feedback, you know, from somebody who's done the coaching with Diana and I'm sure um, people will see it and respond mm -hmm. to you. But that's there for you. We want you to know, you know, one of the reasons that we were so excited to uh, work with Diana is that she is like we're saying right now, like I'm painting and she's painting and we're totally different. Right. And, and yeah. like, so I am able to do some things and, but I can't do everything. And, and some, some of the way that I do something is, is, you know, it's, it's just, we're all just limited. So like having a different perspective, having a different voice, having somebody who does something totally different, you know, but with the same heart, the same kind of passion, the same kind of enthusiasm for art and for people, you know, mm -hmm. that, that's Diana. She brings that. And oh, so anyways, that's, that's, that's part, Thank of, you. part of what we're, you know, so delighted to have her be part of Acrylic University. And we feel like it's a huge blessing to us and to you guys. So take advantage of what is offered there because it's, it's a, uh, it's there for you guys. It's there for mm -hmm. your growth. And anyways. Um, Thank you. That's really sweet. You know, it's, it's interesting how when you're learning this skill, this craft, um, 
the tools that you use to get someplace, the visual tools are the same. And so the things that Jed will be teaching or the things that I will be teaching sound like value, temperature, um, design, placement, um, brushwork. Those are the tools we have in our hands to use. And then how we choose to use them why you know and when we choose to use them how we when we choose not to use the tools that's all part of our personal you know our, our personal aesthetic and so but we'll hear us saying a lot of the same things but then we use them different then we use the tools differently <laughs> but yeah. we're talking about values and you know all this stuff and uh temperature of of color and you know all those things mm -hmm. same principles a uh, different practice of the principles yeah. sometimes, or something like that but basically That's you're going to learn you're not going to get differing you're not going to get differing like one of us is necessarily going to say oh you should you know paint this way and then another one is going to say no 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 you should do this you know this is the most important <laughs> like we've had enough conversations that we're like you know man we really line up on this stuff like yeah. you think that value is more important than you think design is more important than the brushwork so do i you know like that's so yeah. interesting right you know like um so yeah it's, um, it's, it's cool there are a couple comments i want to get to so yeah Oh yeah, we're just we're just going on here. <laughs> Joan says, um, "Any contest tonight?" And no, I don't think we're giving away paintings tonight. Um, but um, definitely next week during uh, the Nova Scotia World Tour for sure. Um, and then we had a question for. Uh, well, actually, before that, Lucia Wolf says, "I've learned so much from both of you in the last year, and really appreciate the AU community every day. Truly a blessing. Thank you." Oh, oh that's sweet. Awesome. That's um, awesome. Thanks, Lucia. Yeah, and then Cindy Wilker asks, how many works should we have to make a critique from Diana worthwhile? You know, I, I'm, I'm going to say if you just have a few, if you've, if you've got mm -hmm. like, even if you're just a beginner, um, mm -hmm. you know, it's hard to get a critique when you're a beginner because you're putting yourself out there. You know, yeah. everything is new and, and your sen artists are sensitive people. And so if someone says, oh, you know, maybe this should be different. You're like, I worked so hard on that. So, yeah, yeah. Um, but um, even if you only have a few paintings, you can benefit from a critique. But what I ask in the critique is that you tell me what you want. You tell me where you're going because mm -hmm. the art world is wide open and you know everything is just there's so much out there i mean if you look at all the different artists you know you start comparing artist to artist to artist there's so much out there that you could do um so you've got to say what artist inspires you how you know where do you see your art in 10 years what would you like your art to look like and then I can help you find the tools you need to get there. If you just want to paint better, that's like saying I'd like to, you know, play the piano better. But are you a classical piano player? Are you a jazz piano player? Mm -hmm. uh, do you play in the, you know, I mean, it's there's just so much that's um, that's out there. So I would need for you to have an idea. And it's really hard for some people who are just beginning to know what they want their artwork to look like. They just know, sort of know they want to paint. Uh, that was me. I just knew I wanted to paint and I wanted to paint like those guys, like those Russian Impressionist guys. That was enough. And I think for people doing the critique, if you know that much, mm -hmm. I can help you. If you don't know, wait until you can sort of know what what you would like your art to look like when you're when you grow up um and then i can help you get there otherwise i might just be um critiquing something that you're particularly fond of and it might make you sad so <laughs> i don't want to do that i want you to grow as an artist and grow your aesthetic and grow your ideas 
And to do that, you got to take risks. You know. So, and, Diana, if somebody somebody is interested in a critique, but they're they they don't know what they want to do, like they mm -hmm. they don't know enough to say, you know, this is what I really want. Is there a way, like, w can you sit and help somebody? Like, even is there like, would there be a, a value in saying? Let me show you, like maybe it'd be more like a teaching time or, or they, they tell you, um, these are the artists that I like, but I don't know what exactly I like about it or, you know, um, or, you know what I mean? Like, yes. do they, how defined do they have to be and, and, and can you help them maybe even filter some of their thoughts, you know, to, to kind of like get down to the essence of, I think what you're saying is you, you like this, you know, I don't know, just yeah. What kind of painting do you like? Do you like impressionism? Do you like it hyper realist? Do you like traditional realism? Do mm -hmm. you like, uh, you know, things that are almost abstract because they're yeah. so painterly? I mean, you can just say what you like, and I can sort of to sort of tease out of that where you might would like to to explore. And so rather mm. than saying, you know, right or wrong on a painting and say, why don't we explore values? Because that's a tool you could use to get you so many places. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Uh, and I can see by your paintings that if you were to practice your values more, uh, you could get further along, you know, yeah. not. And so it's there's that, too, which is just sort of starting with the very beginning Um techniques and tools, we still can do that. Mm -hmm. um, you don't have to ha be, have the long-term goal. It could be a short-term goal. Just want to get the tools in your hands so that yeah. you know what you're doing. Um, yeah. And, you know, the thing, the thing that I like is when people can be really um, just honest about it and say, this mm -hmm. is where I'd like to go. And I, I don't, see that these paintings are there yet and sometimes just putting words to it just saying i want to do this makes you go oh i really do want to do that and then you change the your habits mm -hmm. yeah Does what is something sense? yeah that totally makes sense to me okay. that was that was that was good yeah i because i i mean i feel like i i don't really know you know it's it's always interesting to me because um I mean, now that I, I'm just going to do a little backward thinking here and, and think about when I started painting, when I started painting, um, I mean, I grew up painting in watercolor with my, with my family my, my dad and my mom were watercolor artists and I was blessed to have them as parents and they encouraged me in art and, you know, I had access to paints and stuff like that. So that, that was amazing. Um, but then I got into music and I kind of left art for a while. And then when I came back, what really got me into it again was I, I had taken a, we'd taken a trip and I wanted to paint some, but I brought my watercolors. And then I discovered, that was when I discovered the oils and acrylics that I saw in a gallery. And I thought, wow, these are so amazing. They're different. Like they're vibrant and, you know, mm -hmm. kind of thick and juicy. And I, I didn't know much about it, but I was just like, I wonder if I could paint like this. And, um, and so I had, I think from the start, I actually had a model in my mind, you know, like I, I, I admired Mike Svob's paintings. I admired Robert Genn's paintings. They were, they were like the, the inspiration. So kind of like when you went in and saw the Russian impressionist, um, you know, it, it was, that was what got you. That was kind yeah. of the same thing with me is like I saw something in particular that I liked and it got me. It, it, it kind of hooked me. And so I don't know if I have I mean, I'm, I'm wondering if that's if that's a common experience for people if, if or if there's something else that like maybe it's just a, a more of a generic desire to paint or do something because they did it when they're young. Um, so it's it's kind of interesting to think about because I don't. I don't really know if my experience or your experience is a common one and people have a pretty strong idea of like, yeah, I, I know what I, I like and, and this is kind of what it is or if, 
or if they don't, you know, because I, mm -hmm. I guess it, I only know my own experience right now. Well, I think some people really just want to learn the craft of it, and they've seen some paintings. Um, my suggestion is to, since we can't go to museums just right now, go online and start looking up some, you know, great, some of the great paintings. There you go. And, and um, pick out the, the ones that speak to you, that make you feel emotional and make you feel like driven to um, want to improve or make you feel like, oh my God, I didn't know human beings were able to do <laughs> that, to even yeah. to even express themselves that way. How could I, how can I do that? You know, when you start thinking in those terms, then you've been moved. You've been blessed with vision and, um, then you can just write those things down. That's a starting point. You mm -hmm. don't know where the journey is going to take you, but there's always a starting point. Mm -hmm. um, I've, um, you know. Diana, I have, a, I have a question for you. Do you have, do you know the names of those Russian impressionist painters that inspired you early on in your painting career? Yes. Sergei Bongart, B-O-N-G-A-R-T. Uh-huh. And Nikolai Feshin, F E C H I N. Okay. And then there's another one called uh, Levitin. It's a like Levitin. Isaac Levitin, yeah. Yeah. He's brilliant. Yeah. Uh, I, I just uh, discovered him last year, actually. And um, I, you know, I actually used to, before the internet would go to New York because there was a bookstore there that had. Uh -huh. what, was it 13 miles of used books and I could find wow you know, print books on people like Levitan and I remember getting into an arm almost an arm wrestling match with somebody <laughs> over <laughs> the last <laughs> <Levitan book. laughs> uh, he was and he let me have it so <laughs> uh, that's nice um <laughs> Lisa Elliott says, I used to see this artist at the Harrison Center and I loved his work and knew I wanted to know more. The artist who inspired me is Jed Dorsey. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Well, that, that's very flattering. I, 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 when I heard Harrison Center, I was like, oh, I think I know where this is going. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's nice of you, Lisa. I appreciate that. I mean, it is kind of, I mean, because I, I get that. That, that's like, I think, you know, when, when I think about, well, sometimes when, when somebody wants to do the, you know, they want to become a member or something, it's a lot of times, you know, they've seen my work or they've heard about something, you know, like, I don't think, I mean, if I was taking a lesson from Diana, it would be because I love what she does, right? I wouldn't, if I, if I wasn't a fan of an artist, I probably wouldn't be there, you know, studying. Where, but I do think that that's one of the benefits. You you kind of alluded to it, Diana, but I think like you chose the artist that you were going to study under. And yes. I think that's one of the benefits of perhaps not doing the traditional art school, but doing something where you're like, I'll take workshops. I'll, I'll study under people that I really want to learn from. And, um, you know, where if you, if you do a, maybe a different kind of schooling and you, you just get classes with whoever you don't necessarily even know who they are beforehand or anything. So, right. um, yeah. And a lot of time, you know, back, back in the, back in the olden days when I was uh, considering going to art school, I, I talked to a lot of people and they said their teachers would just sort of leave them in a room with paint and say, emote and leave <laughs> <laughs> they didn't, oh, really? it's different now in art schools they actually teach you things but um there was a time when that wasn't the you know that wasn't the thing and and people really yeah <laughs> and it was like mm -hmm. they they needed real instruction uh yeah. to learn real techniques and um to figure out how they're going to go about i mean because that's the whole thing how are you going to go about getting paint on paper and getting it to look what you want it to look like. That's the sort of the deal. And you know, how are you going to do that? Well, yeah. 
having somebody leave you alone in a room, uh, you know, maybe in about uh, 10,000 years, you'll <laughs> yeah. out on your own. Yeah. Or... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's kind of, I mean, there's no, like, like you say, there, there's no uh, substitute for, for miles, you know, like they say painting miles or hours, you know, like to math uh -huh. or something. I mean, you, you're not going to really get around that. It doesn't no. matter if you're studying under, you know, Michelangelo, you still are going to have to do it yourself. Um, but yes. it, the, the thing for me is like, if you're headed in the wrong direction, which you can kind of do a little bit at least like you know because oh, yeah. you don't really know what you're up to i mean i when i first bought my first set of acrylics i i didn't know i i started painting in them like i would watercolor i i just <laughs> that was the only thing i knew how to do and and i didn't realize that there was you could totally approach it differently you know you could so the the instruction at different p points j to get you headed in the right direction can't be it can't be um, overvalued, really. You know, like you just need somebody else sometimes to come in. And I mean, that's the way it is with everything, right, Peter? Like, e even like last week, we were talking about business with Ted. And, and uh, yeah. I don't know if we mentioned anything last week about this, but, you know, there's the idea that, like, if somebody else has already figured something out, why exactly. would you, you know, why would you bash on? your head into a wall trying to figure it out yourself when you can go to the masters? Yeah. Right. You know, I know. Learn I, I, uh, I said this to one of my students last week. We sort of stand on the shoulders of the people who taught us and came before. We don't uh -huh. have to reinvent every wheel, but yeah. we do have to do our own work. There's a point where you uh -huh. have to decide what your work's going to look like and how it's going to be. And there's it's in the studio. You have a cliff. You know, you sort of got to jump off this cliff and you're on your own. Yeah. There's nobody to, you know, we can hold your hand, but you still have to jump off, you know, you have to make that final choice of what your paintings are going to look like, how you're going to assemble them. Those choices are going to be yours and yours alone. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's once you've got the tools. So if you don't have the tools, you're not going to be able to do it. You know, if you yeah. don't know how to make the color darker. How are you going to able be able to do anything if you don't know how to make a color softer or duller, or you don't know what you know what colors to pick? I have had people in my classes who literally did not know that you could mix green with yellow and blue. <laughs> had no clue. I mean, where were they in kindergarten? I don't know, but I'm not Diana, judging. <laughs> Diana, you didn't have to bring up that first class I took with you. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, just poke you right in the eye, right? <laughs> that was mean. Man, seriously. I know I know it was embarrassing back then, but you didn't have to embarrass me this night. No. <laughs> I'm just uh, no, you know, I mean, that's the thing is like, I mean, but and and that's kind of a simple thing, but that's the kind of thing I think that even that's like a pretty um, you know, for most people, they say, like, well, I know how to mix blue and yellow or, and make green. You know, that's that's clear. But that's an example of something that that is kind of second nature to somebody who's been around or or has has painted for a while. Or, you know, like sometimes it's it's not as obvious, though, you know, and it, yes. yet it's still as as um, crucial to your, you know, to your growth. Because you're you're just not observing something that to to the painter who's been painting for you know 25 years you know it's like oh well no of course you're not going to do it that way you know but but you don't you don't know that <laughs> yeah I, I, <laughs> kind of somebody I, I, tells I, I, you you're right you no know, sometimes you just need somebody to tell you because I mean you could go to the paint store and buy all your paints pre mixed. Yeah, that, exactly. That and that's that was kind of what was the obvious thing in my head was like people do that all the time. They don't realize that. Well, the color that you just bought is just ultramarine blue and white together. It's just a light blue. Right. But, but that's just, literally all it is. You could have made that yourself and saved, you know, the <laughs> whatever. So the pain and agony of of the paint store prices. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and that's you know a lot of a lot of what 
art teachers have to offer is just, you know, we've put in some miles and we've solved some problems and we're here to just give you the benefit of what we've solved. So you can then go out and solve some new problems. Um, yeah. You know? <laughs> uh, yeah. I do remember my first, uh, when I, when I had, um, the story, I don't know if many people know this story, but maybe some people do. I was given, the day I gave away my oil paints, someone called me and gave me almost $10,000 worth of acrylic paints. Just out of the blue, called me out of the blue and gave me all these paints. And I just was like so blown away. And I sat down with the paints and said, now what? And then I started uh -huh. painting with them and they dried fast and I couldn't get good edges and the texture was wrong and they weren't like oils. And so what I did was I, um, my kids were teenagers and I said, see you later. <laughs> I pulled, I turned off my cell phone. I locked the door of my studio and I, I basically just hid in there for almost three months. Wow. Trying to solve these problems, trying to figure out how do you solve the problems of acrylic paint? And how do you get past the fact that they're not oils? One of the biggest things I think that some people have to deal with is the bitterness they have that they're not oils. Yeah. <laughs> they're angry at the paint because they're not oil paints. And uh, they have their own way of working and um, their own language that you use when you're working with them. Um, yeah. Guys, we have our first donation to the stream. Uh, that we've gotten Friday Night Live so far. Um, Whoa. Jigger2361 with a super chat donated 20 Canadian dollars and says, keep laughing and painting, nice people. It's the vaccine to the winter and COVID doldrums. Oh, oh that, is so, nice that of you. is so amazing. Oh. Well, I, I want to say something in response to that because I, I, I think that, that is, that's awesome. I mean, go for like, it. Super Crazy. cool. But this is something that I was going to say earlier. I haven't verified this with my wife or, or anything like this, but this is what I want to say. So if anybody would like to purchase Diana's demo from tonight, this is my offer. This is the only time I'm going to say this. I'm going to say it one time. Well, I probably have to repeat it, but um, I'm, I'm going to say this one tonight during this thing, and it, somebody has to take me up on this tonight. Before the end of this, I'm not going to like go and have people trying to reach out to me after this event or anything like this. But here's my deal. I mean, I, this may not feel like that amazing or anything. I don't know. But this is my deal. <laughs> if you want to buy Diana's um, um, demo tonight, I will personally contribute $100 towards your purchase of her painting. So what? I, I've said it. I've said it. Now, if somebody wants to take me up on that, it's up to you letting Peter know or somehow I'm I'm painting. You can't, you know, whatever. But first person who says I'll do it, you know, you have to work it out. All whatever. Right. There it is. All right. There we go. Cool. All right. <laughs> well, that's that's sort of amazing. Awesome. Well, Thank you. I, yeah. That, and that was all spawned by <laughs> Jigger. <laughs> I was going to say Juggernaut because it made me think of Juggernaut. But yeah, we uh, have fun. Jed, we have a problem that I don't think you anticipated. Um, I think we have multiple takers. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh. All well. Right. Like I said, it's the first, whatever you, you figured out, Peter, that's your job. I'm not going to get it. Peter's All figuring right. it out. So he's will... got a number. If you want to figure it out your old fashioned way, or so, you can do something, Peter. That's all I got to say, man. <laughs> okay. You got a number. You can run a, you, you know, you can do something. <laughs> Sounds good. I'm going to do something crazy here. I'm going to get some thick paint, like really thick paint. Look at this. Super thick. Oh, look at that. So thick. And I'm going to get some thick green. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this foreground textural. 
and make it because things that are dark and things that are sort of dull and color uh, don't really come forward, but thick paint comes forward. So I'm going to really get this thick paint happening with a color shaper. Look at how just changing the thickness changes the feel of that foreground. So there's a lot of dark in there. Hoo-hoo. That made me happy. That just made me feel really good to just slab some paint on there, too. Oh, my goodness. That's awesome. I didn't see what you did, but it sounded really fun. <laughs> I just mixed up a giant gob of my foreground color, like giant gob, you know, probably That's super $10 awesome. dollars in the paint gob and just yeah, yeah, yeah. slammed it into the foreground with a big color shaper. And so that makes me awesome. want to ask you a question, Diana, because um, you, you, I know from looking at your paintings in person, I know that you use a lot of paint. And yeah, and so I know that that's something that a lot of people struggle with, uh, myself included. I, I think that there are times when I'm like, oh man, I should be using more paint, you know, like I'm, I'm kind of, you know, just kind of dabbing it on really light or something and it just doesn't have the, the feel that I'm looking for. But what would you say to somebody who is, you know, maybe finding themselves in that situation where they're, they, they, they're not using enough paint and and uh, is there something that you would suggest or is there any way that you, you approach it that helps you? Yes. Um, I try to work out my color harmony in advance. And um, I try to mix up big enough uh, gobs of the paint in advance because what happens when you dab a little on and it's the right color and then you don't have enough of it then you have to remix it and by that time you've lost your that mojo <laughs> yeah. mixing so when i find a color that's right i mix a ton of it so i can just slap into it keeping and you do this too jed you keep your colors your your colors on your palette re relatively simple not a lot of pigments not like you know yeah. all painters put 20 pigments up and dip into them. I put three, a red, yellow, blue. This time I had four, I had two blues. That's yeah. it. Yeah. And, and that helps me remix the right colors of paint and keep the mm. color harmony um, going. But just at some point, just saying like I did, you know, I need this paint to be thick. I really need to um, bring the foreground forward and the thing that does that and the thing that makes things emphasized is the paint so um and, and i think just having a real solid value plan and having a solid color harmony plan to set out in the beginning helps you because then you're not afraid to put the thick paint because you know where it belongs you know it's gonna go in the right place uh, yeah and you want to wipe it off or a lot of people, I mean, it's expensive stuff, and a lot of people are worried about wasting. Um, yeah, that was what I was thinking about, too. And and the, I don't have a solution for that, except that I try to keep my pools fairly clean, the middle of my pool, and I'll put it back in my paint box when I'm done. And then I don't waste the big gobs I've set out. Now, I know you don't set them out. You dip into your box. Well, I, I'm actually recently, Diana, because of your influence, I've I've actually kind of gone back and I've I've been using my palette kind of like you. Oh. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he has. It's true. Um, That's crazy. That's great. Right, we have a few. We have a few questions. So, Diana, what would you want to sell your painting for? Okay, this is a fourteen by eighteen, and. Um, you know, I'm, I'm trying I to... I knew this was going to come up. Now, this numbers. is getting into how to price your painting. <laughs> numbers are hard to, hard to pick out of my brain when I'm painting. It's a different uh -huh. part of my brain. But I'm a 16 by 20. Gallery price is... Don't have sticker shock because it's the gallery price. I, you know, this will be half of that. Um, mm -hmm. Is about $900. 
so my this is a 14 by 18 so that would be like i'd say they i'd say my um my tonight and tonight only for you tonight only 400 400 and i'm paying 100 that means you get it for 300 that right. is a that is a steal a of a deal. That's correct. Right so we we have multiple takers though, so you'd have to bid in the chat, <laughs> I suppose. Um, <laughs> you, we can either do this. We can do this by bid. <laughs> no, I'm just. <laughs> who, who's willing um, to pay the most? <laughs> so right, the, the sticker shock might have sent some people away, but. <laughs> um. Okay. So <laughs> then. Uh, we had some questions about what a, what is a color shaper. There were a couple people who were new to acrylics or hadn't weren't familiar with that term. So what's a what's a color shaper? Okay, so um, there's a couple of brands on the market. I'm gonna hold this out. It is it's it's shaped like a brush. Can you see it? It um, but it's a rubber spatula on the end. It's just a big brush shaped rubber spatula there's another brand you can see how i've had this one for almost 20 years it's just caked with paint um they, there's another brand called catalyst that makes a long handled version which is really nice the nice thing about these is you just run them under hot water and the rubber spatula part just cleans right off and then i can take the little the little sharp tip and rub through here and make textures or I can take the wide tip and make, um, just slab the paint down. I have a small one here. They come in all different sizes. I have, there's ones that are as tiny, like as thin as a pencil. Here's one. This color shaper has a tiny little fine line on it. So you can etch like really little lines through your paint. And it has um, a wide edge then. This one too, I've had for almost 20 years. So sorry about the condition of the handle, but you can like scrape things back with them and then gouge through the paint with them. And they're just lovely tools to have to create a variety of different things happening. Um, catalyst or color shapers. Um, and they have, some of them have different textural tips on the ends too. I like the, just the plain ones. And these are great for mixing the paints on your palette too, because when you mix with a brush, which I do when I forget, it gets all up in the ferrule of the brush. And these ones, you can just, it's like just having a nice spatula to, to work with. They're nicer. I like them more than uh, palette knives because palette knives are bent and I have to hold them in such a way my knuckles sometimes rub through the paint in the painting. And these ones are more like a brush, so they um, I can use them upwards, and they don't. Um, my knuckles don't go through the paint. Yeah, <laughs> so I'm trying to. Yeah, look I, I know. What you're, I totally know what you're talking about. They're they're <laughs> basically they are basically like a, a rubber paintbrush in my mind. Like yeah. it's kind of like they're really cool. They're if you've never used one, there's a lot of things that you can do with them that are that's interesting. I have um, a couple, um, and for a long time I only had one, and it was a pretty big one. But I used it um, also to do some negative or reductive painting, like like if you were trying to. I don't know if you said that. I, I kind of you might have mentioned that, but that was that's one of the things that I've used it for too. Is you know, I'll put on a wash or a glaze and then I'll draw with that rubber shaper by scraping away that, that, uh, paint where I'm, you know, where my drawing goes. And so it's, it's, it's lots of really cool things. And because like I say, because it's the rubber, I, I was never worried about it. Like damaging, like, I mean, you probably wouldn't damage your canvas if you're doing that with a palette knife, but I know I'm not going to damage it or anything with, with the rubber scraper in it. It kind of has a neat texture and a feel to it, so. Yeah, I love I love it. And it um, it just, like like I you know said, it kind of lasts forever. So you- Yeah, you they really one. do. I, I have it in my plein air box because you can put a lot of paint down fast when you're painting plein air. You just have to go really fast. You can't, uh, you know, take a breath. You just have to keep, yeah. just have to go and go quickly. 
No dilly dallying. <laughs> no dilly dallying, exactly. <laughs> oh, that's fun. Whew. Was there another question there, Peter? I can't remember. You said there's maybe two questions. No, that was that was it. Okay, that was it. That okay, was, cool. Okay. Um <laughs> well we we had we had more a uh, couple another one just come in. Jigger says Two interested parties, maybe Jed will sell his. Yeah, Jed, go for it. <laughs> sell yours too. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I mean, I'd be happy to sell mine if somebody wanted it. Um, I normally don't sell them on the thing, but I mean, I, I could sell it if, if, if that was the, the deal, if people were interested. Why don't we figure out the winner of the first one? And then we can just ask the the second person, you know, if they'd be interested, and I'd be happy to work something out. Yeah, we've um, yeah, we figured out the winner of the first one, um, okay. Lori Nuver Canuver, um, said so that she would purchase Diana's painting. So oh uh, well, congratulations. That's great. That's, Thanks, Lori. That's awesome. Then, yeah, fun. absolutely. And then let's see. Um, Kathy Mc, uh, McLearney. Sorry if I mispronounced that last name. Um, also said they were interested. Um, but we'll see. We'll see how it plays out. We're coming up cool. on an hour and 16 minutes right now. Okay. Whoa. Okay. So we, we'll be done here and, and pretty, pretty shortly. We usually go about, yeah. Well, man, I mean, so Peter, what, what do we, I'm just thinking guys, if you are interested, um, I, I, I forgot to mention this and I don't have any links for you or anything probably right now, but we're going to be teaching a live class on, uh, what that day is that it's going to be Saturday, March 13th. So I really keep that date in mind. If you're interested in doing a really cool live class, uh, we're going to be I'm going to, I'll put out, I'll make sure that I get the scene for next week when we're doing Friday night live so that you, you could see exactly what we're going to be actually painting. Um, but I can just guarantee it's going to be a really beautiful scene and, uh, it's going to be fun time. So mm -hmm. keep that in mind. And, um, I'm just trying to think what else, is there anything else that we need to tell people? Um, I don't think so. Not well, at the moment. Next week we're going to be in Nova. What is that? It Nova Scotia. Am I getting it yeah. right? Or, yeah, yeah, Nova, Nova Scotia. Scotia. And oh, that, oh, go ahead. I, I have one. I have one thing um, to throw out there. Um, so uh, last or a few weeks ago, guys, we did a special painting for Valentine's Day where we had people submit stories to us about. Um, uh, someone they knew that they thought deserved a painting done for them. And so we had somebody in chat suggested that um, AU members kind of do the same thing, you know, paint paintings, like meaningful paintings for strangers. Um, oh, and well, yeah. yeah, I know. So we, we, we talked about it and we don't have time really to keep up with that. But if there's anybody out there that would be interested and has the time um, to you know, work with that or would be interested in kind of leading that we have resources for you and all that stuff. Um, just email or text one of us. Um, and maybe we can get some set up. Just thought I would throw that out there. Yeah, for sure. We're, Oh, go ahead, Diana. Oh no, 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 no. This is great. I'm, I was just saying what a lovely idea. I was, what a lovely idea that would be to, to spread the love around. That's totally, gorgeous. totally. And it was super cool because we have a bunch of people who said, yeah, I'd be willing to, you know, give a painting away or, you know, do something. And, and we had taken this kind of, um, uh, I don't know, we'd, we'd put out a form and had people s say, hey, do you know of anybody who might be encouraged by a, by a painting? Mm -hmm. And we had a whole bunch of stories and a bunch of people's, you know, kind of respond. So we know that there's plenty of people that, we could, you know, find um, to to who would really benefit from uh, painting and feeling loved and that kind of thing. So, 
And it was also super fun to see and know that there's so many people from our community who are willing to step in and, and say, yeah, I'd do that. The reality is just what Peter said. We, we're kind of like going, okay, well, how would we coordinate that? And like, you know, setting it up and figuring it out. And so we just kind of today, we're just thinking, man, we'd love to see it happen, but I just don't think we have the bandwidth to do it. It's just um, a little bit beyond where we are right now. But we could help, uh, you know, get somebody set up or at least think through it, you know. Um, but it, anyways, we'd love to see it happen. But that's kind of where that is in our court right now. So if that does, you know, kind of strike a chord with you and you feel like that's something that you would be interested in or even just having a conversation about, you know, because uh, we don't have it all figured out by any means. Um, and it, so you know, you would have to, you know, like we, but we'd be willing to sit and talk with you. That's, that's all that I'm saying. Um, we'd, we'd love to have those conversations and, and look at it. So, um, and I, I was going to say one other thing, there was something that came into my head, which was, um, Oh, well, this is what I was thinking. Actually, I think it's kind of cool that we're in Nova or we're in a, Prince Edward Island for this, these trees, right, tonight, and then we're going to Nova Scotia. Wow, we're kind of like hitting the eastern seaboard of Canada. That's right, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was not that's planned, but... <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, oh, I was going to just mention that I will be doing the Q&A next Tuesday night. Um, oh, yeah. And and uh, people have been asking for animals and portraits. So check uh, one of those will be checked off the list. An animal. I studied for I studied portraiture and oils for almost 10 years. So maybe I could pull something off in an hour. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm up to it. Getting closer oh, to it. Great. It would be super fun to give it a try. Um, Anyway, you know, I'm always up for, yeah. for, for fun and games. I'm always up for fun and games. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's great. Well, and that reminds me, so you could do it. Maybe a, you could do part one and part two also if, if that was yeah. an option, you know, maybe something like that. Um, that makes me think, too, in the week after that, um, I, I actually need to confirm the date. I shouldn't say the date yet, but at some point coming up, Ted Eckert, who was on with uh, me and Peter last week um, and and is a guy who is married to Susan Eckert, one of our members and an artist who uh, they, they are really uh, kind of helping people who are in art and thinking through business and, you know, how to navigate those things together how to how to do that um he is going to do a um q a coming up and i i haven't confirmed the date or anything but that's going to be a fun one too so make sure that you keep keep your um you know eyes open for when we do that but also i would just say make sure that you kind of are thinking through those of you who are really interested in um you know, how could I pursue this as a business? How could I, you know, think about this? What, what, what are the, what are the questions that you have? Keep them in your head and make sure that you, you uh, ask them. I'm going to be um, putting out a form pretty soon just to field some of those questions and get some feedback from you so that we have the best um, possible kind of trajectory going into that uh, conversation. So, Anyways, just keep that in mind. It's going to be coming up in the next little while here, and it'll be lots of fun. It sounds like great information. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be really good. You know, this is my thing. Um, I think that I overdid it on these, uh, the, um, the crooked nature of my trees. I'm looking at them and I'm thinking, I uh, might just jump in there and do a little bit of uh, editing, but I think that we kind of have to go. I think so too. <laughs> so, um, 
So I'm going to yeah. here before I wreck it. <laughs> you know, Peter, you want to know something interesting about Facebook? I don't know. Um, I'm going to, I'll switch to this view. But um, we have a way that if people, if we can invite people to restream, which is this broadcasting kind of service that we have. Mm -hmm. And it would, if you're a Facebook person and you're on there and, and if you give us your comments right now, all it does is it says Facebook user. It won't tell us yeah. your name. <laughs> like this. So we have to, yeah, that's what it looks like. So if we're not responding to you by name or anything like that, yeah. make sure that we actually have a way of in, you can you can log into Restream and connect your Facebook thing so that it would actually come up with your your name and who you are. It would just be cool. But anyways, guys, it was so fun tonight, Diana. It was. So thank fun. you so much for it being was here. It was super fun, Peter. <laughs> thank you for so your great, thanks. Absolutely. Thanks for uh, me. Before we leave, though, before we leave, though, I just want to put you guys side by side. You should hold your uh, canvases up a little bit so that people can see what okay. the final. Uh... Oh, I'll just switch mine. I'll switch mine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you can switch yours and hold up a little bit. So okay. I can't. I can't see if it's. I know. Uh, like <laughs> I know. You look. So. <laughs> go a little lower, Diana. Just a little bit. Lower. Yep. Right. Perfect. And then great? up slightly. Wow. And then up slightly. All Nicely right. done, guys. Beautiful paintings. Isn't that amazing. Oh. Gorgeous. You're just so rich, Diana. I, I know. I'm like, <laughs> going like, wow. It's crazy. Yeah, guys, we'll we'll be sure to post both to you know the community and all the socials. So, um, we, we we'll post pictures of both finished paintings. Um, but okay. yeah, oh, yeah. I'll take a good photo of this. I, I'm painting this in the hallway of my staircase. So. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Which That's is where funny. I could get internet. So I, I'm uh, surprised anything happened at all. But um, yeah, I'll take a good photo of it and send it to you, Peter. <laughs> super, super Perfect. fun. Thank you, thank you guys so much for being here. We will be back next week. And we'll be in Nova Scotia for our normal Friday Night Live. We'll try to have uh, another guest with us. Thank you again, Diana, for being here. It was such a pleasure. I just saw somebody say that they wanted my palette paper, which uh, <laughs> way too much paint still on it to give it away quite yet. But maybe when I'm done, uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll do that. But thank mm -hmm. you guys for being here. We love you. We believe in you. We look forward to seeing you very soon. If not before, we'll see you next, next week. All right. Bye. Good night, everybody. Love you all.